Hello, my wonderful listeners, and welcome to this week's Catamania episode. This week's episode is going to be the final episode that I am recording in the current Catamania state or the current state that the podcast is in before doing a complete relaunch of the show. Many of you already are aware that I am joining the wonderful network of MBH TV, Money Buys Happiness, and I absolutely cannot wait for what's to come with this opportunity and with this new setup that I'm going to have. Uh, so enjoy this episode, this final episode of the current state that the Catamania show is in. Uh, before I come back to you after putting a little bit of a pause on it uh, with something new. I also know that you're going to enjoy this episode because of the guests that I had on Miss or in this case I'm going to use instead of saying Miss, can I say Miss Doctor? Miss Doctor? Dr. Christina Grindan. Dr. Carissi is a dermatologist based in Germany, born in Romania, and Considering that dermatology is a field that is pretty much always going to be relevant because people always want to stay young, healthy, and beautiful and have great skin, I thought it would be a good idea to chat with her. She has a lot of great content on her own socials about all things skincare and how to care for your skin, how to keep yourself looking young through certain skincare tips. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to chat with her and ask her some questions that you know I want to know about and also that you guys wanted to learn about. I dropped a little Q&A before this podcast episode and I tried to address as many questions as you had for her. So without talking too much because the episode in and of itself is pretty much almost an hour long, please give it up for Dr. Chrissy. And if you like this podcast and like this episode, please do give it a like button of whatever sorts it is that you're listening or whatever sorts like button you have. Should probably learn how to speak first before recording these intros. Whatever the like button is on the platform that you're listening to this on, please click that and enjoy and stay blessed. Welcome to Catamania, <laughs> my namesake with the most beautiful name. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation, Christina. I'm honored to be here with you. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm excited to chat with you. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you are one of the few people, because of your obviously Eastern European Romanian background, who has the same spelling of, of my name even, because in Canada, it's either Christina with an H or Christina with a K. Nobody spells my name correctly which is with no H and with a C. So you have exactly. not only the same name <laughs> by the sound of it, but also the way it's written. So you were born in Romania, right? I was born in Romania uh, and I uh, lived there until I was 19. And when uh, I turned 19, it was the end of my high school. So I decided to um, develop a little bit myself and uh, I moved to Germany, to Berlin, <laughs> to one of the most coldest city in the north of Europe, but a very beautiful city as well. And um, yeah. yeah, I studied medical school here for six years, even not being a native German, not being a native English speaker, so a uh, Romanian speaker. I didn't know so much uh, the language, but I was uh, learning English at the same time while uh, studying uh, medicine. And uh, yeah, uh, several years later, I became a doctor. Now I'm um, doing my residency for dermatology and uh, enjoying every second of it and sharing my knowledge with everyone and uh, trying to make people look uh, more beautiful <laughs> and more healthy with a more healthy skin. That's quite a way yeah. to learn a language though. So you studied in German and in English or how was that? So actually I learned English honestly um, by watching Hollywood movies, by reading books, of course in school too, Same here. but this is how, this is how I started. I was three, yeah. four years old watching, I don't know, uh, Harry Potter, watching all these Hollywood new movies without being able to read. And this is how I just learned it. My parents were very, very surprised how I did that, but somehow beginning with the first and second grade, everyone was asking themselves, like, how, how did a, such a young girl learn English. My mother was like, she learned by itself, by herself. She was just uh, watching movies all the time and uh, learning uh, just by hearing. And German, uh, 
German definitely I had in high school. So we we learned that we had not not all like not everything in German. So math was in German, chemistry was in German. Some of the some of the uh, courses that we took, but not everything. And most of the German I learned uh, while studying. It was very 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 um, hard for me at the beginning. But somehow I don't know. I did the first the first time when I entered the. Uh, the medical school in Germany and they were talking everything in German and it's so complicated. It's not just German, it's the medical German, it's the medical um, words in German. It's, it was really, really hard, but I don't know, I managed it. I was very devoted. I was going to say very... out of all the ways that you could learn a language to go into a medical field, because medical, <laughs> I guess medical field has a lot of like Latin based words. But yes. still, to learn something but as complicated, it would be like learning law in a language that's not yours, <laughs> you know? Like, it's, it's insane to me. Yeah, it, yeah. definitely. It was uh, very challenging. But uh, I was very, very uh, motivated because I wanted it so mm. much. You know what I mean? So I wanted to finish medical school in Germany so much. I studied at a very unique university, Charité. I don't know if you know it. It's one of the best medical schools in Europe. So I was very happy to be there because the competition is so, so, so high. And to get a spot there, it's not easy. But I was, I was very devoted and I wanted it. And I know so many people around me, you know, it's very common for Eastern European girls. Oh, you're beautiful. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to study. But I didn't want that. You know, I didn't want this, um, this scam from people. I always want to be beautiful and smart. So I, I said, no, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to do everything to become successful. And I, I left Romania because I knew that I'm going to have more opportunity in the Western Europe. So I came to Berlin, <laughs> to Germany. Love that. Yeah. Well, you got that for sure. Smart and beautiful chick. <laughs> you got that there. Hopefully. <laughs> How, yeah. where in Romania are you from exactly? Sibiu. You know Sibiu? Okay. It's a, yes. It's a very small city, but a very cute city in yes. the middle of Transylvania. So the, the, um, the part of Europe where they always say that Dracula is coming. I mean, I'm not Dracula. I'm not a vampire, <laughs> even though maybe I'm so white and I'm kind of looking like it because of the lack of sun. But um, no, that's, the, that, that, that's just a fairy tale. That's just a, maybe a horror movie. Um, it's a small city, a very cute city, not so many people, but very, very kind people, very, very sweet and kind people. Fortunately, not so many opportunities back then. Now more, but back then, if you make a comparison between the medical school in, in Sibiu and the one in Germany, it's a huge difference. So, of course, things developed in the last 11 years, but still, you couldn't compare it. My parents were always sure. pushing me, you know, the strict East European parents who always want uh, their daughters or their sons to become the most successful kids in the world. And uh, I'm coming from a, from a very kind family. I, had, I have amazing parents, but very strict. They always wanted me to, to be the best, you know, better than them, better than anyone. So um, they kind of pushed me, but a good push, I would say. There's got to be like <laughs> that, some similarities with the whole post-communist Thing, right because kind of. obviously kind Romania of. and R Romania had its you know ups and downs a lot of downs and then Moldova yeah. too right like we 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 had a lot of ups a lot of downs um, <laughs> yeah. and I think I think a lot of um, parents from that part of the world from our part of the world they always want for the kids to because they work so hard right and they always want the kids to just like you know, you have all the freedom in the world to be whatever you want to be as long as you're a doctor, a lawyer, or like an exactly. engineer or something, right? <laughs> you know, I was, yeah. I was really laughing with my parents because we were remembering everything. And I remember when uh, I was around 18, 17, 18, and I, went, I, I told my parents, you know what, I think I'm going to become a singer. I have a good voice. I know that. I have a very good voice. So I always want to become a singer. And then my father was sitting like this, looking like, you know, typical Eastern Pia father, looking at me, telling me, Christina, you should become a doctor or an engineer, better an engineer. But I was never good in math. So I was like, no, 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 not, not at all. I'm not going to be an engineer. 
or a lawyer. What do you think of becoming a lawyer? Either a doctor, engineer, or lawyer, or architect. I think these four are actually very good. So you can you have a lot of uh, options. Becoming a singer? No, no. Singer, you you can do that as a hobby. You can be a singer as a hobby, but no. I mean, it's not easy to to go in this kind of world, especially from a small city and. Still, I'm, I'm, it's always like I'm that thing is like, how are you going to make money being a singer, right? How are exactly. you, you know, what are you yeah, gonna for do? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it's the um, same. It's the same. Yeah. I don't wow. regret it. Let's say it like that. I don't regret it. So it's still yeah. the best option. So you, you love what you do. Yes, I do. It's a very, was there very a skilled. moment, was there a moment where you decided or I guess, how did you decide specifically what it is that you love to do? Was it something that you always had a calling for? Or was it something that you had to keep on trying different fields and then you found the one? Um, good question. I was uh, asking myself the same when my father told me, no, you should uh, do something uh, better for your life to have, a, to have a status in this world, to have a meaning, you know. And I was always thinking, okay, but what do I like? Because, you know, when you always want to become a singer, you always, uh, you were always in that uh, artist area. And then you're thinking, okay, but maybe I should think about it a little bit more. I was hardly thinking, what do I actually like in this world? I like to help people. I really genuinely like to help people. I like to hear people out. I like to improve people's mind, body, health. I like to give advices. Sometimes I have to take these advices for myself, <laughs> but you know how it is. Sometimes you give more advices, but sometimes you don't take it for yourself. Um, and then I was thinking, okay, what are you good in school at? I was amazing at chemistry and uh, biology. So I've kind of mixed it, okay, helping people, uh, loving biology, chemistry. Wow, medicine could be a good choice for me. So I start working a lot and learning a lot to, to get a spot. Or medical school. This is how I kind of like went throughout this direction. And I think I did good. So, <laughs> so there yeah. was a little bit of logic attached to it. It's like, okay, this is what yes. I'm good at. And then if I'm good at it, there probably is something to it. So I should pursue it. Exactly. Exactly. This was, yeah. this was the plan. This was the plan. And, um, I mean, everything else that I could think of, it wouldn't fit me. It wouldn't fit my, my way because the way I said, I really enjoy helping people. I really enjoy doing things for people, but not, of course, I could have chosen something in, in, in a social way, you know, like, uh, I don't know, management, social management. Uh, there are a lot of other fields which I could choose, but still I find this, this fits more my niche and, uh, what I would like to do. Yeah. Was there ever any confusion? Did you ever feel confused? Because you know a lot of people are so confused these days. I say it's it's a blessing to be confused because we have so many opportunities and possibilities. Yeah. We can choose anything in this world that we can do, exactly. you know, especially with internet and stuff like that. But so many people feel confused and I think that confusion makes them almost like not do anything. So did you ever have a mm -hmm. moment of confusion or were you one of those people who was like, no, no, like I know exactly what path I need to take. There was a confusion during, uh, during the medical school. Definitely. I was always thinking to myself, did I, did I choose the right, the right field for myself? Because it was very hard. And there were moments where I doubted myself. I mean, I think everyone doubts themselves at one point. And uh, it was hard with, with the new language, learning German at the same time. I didn't have any friends back then. I came all alone to Germany. My family stayed in Romania, so I was living all alone here. No friends, no relatives, anything. So, uh, of course, there were moments where I was thinking to come back, to do something else, to start something new. But still, I was devoted to this because I knew... That if I hurt, if I work very hard, I will achieve it. And I knew that it's always going to be a hard work. It's go, always going to be challenging to achieve something that you really want. And everything that you would choose to do, at one point you were doubted. Is it the right thing to do? Did I choose right? And so on. But somehow I, I, I never let it go because my motivation was higher than the doubt. So I... I was having my moments, maybe drinking a glass of wine, chilling a little bit, and then the next day, you know, head up and go on. 
this is how I learned as a kid. I never, my parents were never ever letting me um, give up on things. Like you started, for example, you started a book, finish it. You started a puzzle, finish it. Like th this was the mindset that I've uh, grown up to. So maybe I think this was one of the reasons why even in doubts, I never gave up. I was, I was secure and um, sure that this is the right thing to do. So, Your calling. Yeah, my calling. <laughs> but you know what's the funny Before thing? Before we dive I... in... Sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. I want you to finish um, your thought for the sure. Funny, the funny thing is that um, the only thing that was always a little bit uh, unsecure is the domain that I would do as a doctor because there are so many fields. You know, you can choose yeah. internal medicine, you can choose cardiology, neurosurgery. So this was a little bit um, tricky at the beginning. But I was always like a person who likes, um, I always liked beauty. I always wanted to, you know, to make people look more beautiful, healthy, and so on. I didn't have a spot in the dermatology from the beginning. So I, I did three years of ophthalmology. So I used to be an eye doctor uh, several years ago until the point where um, I switched. This was the only, yeah, moment. <laughs> I love that. You, a lot of doctors, my mom's a doctor by trade and oh. she went in to become, that was a heartbreak in my family when I decided not to go into medicine. That's a whole other conversation. Um, ah, she your went parents wanted to become, the same for you. <laughs> my dad really wanted it. My mom actually was the one who was like, you know, you love people and spending time with people way too much. And medical school and the first like few years of that working in that field is going to take a lot of time away from you. So she's like, if you can find something where you can kind of balance out your skills mm. and your constant desire, because I'm very extroverted, your constant desire to be with people and to talk to people and, you mm -hmm. know, it would probably be better for you. So she was a little bit less heartbroken, but my dad really wanted me to become a doctor, but mm. it's okay. He's over it. Uh, but she went in <laughs> to become uh, an otorhinolaryngologist, a word that ah. only people who are familiar with the medical field can pronounce, so like ear, <laughs> yeah, yeah. nose, and throat doctor. Ear, nose, and throat doctor, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but she ended up becoming a cardiologist, actually. So oh, amazing. Amazing. An amazing field. It, it kind of happens that way. Yeah, it's, it's a really hard one. She used to do surgeries um, a while back, and then she now works in like the aviation field. But um, mm -hmm. a lot of times people go in thinking that they're gonna do one thing and then they end up doing something else. Lawyers do the same thing. Like every lawyer goes to law school thinking they're gonna be a criminal lawyer, you know, like the ones on TV. And then like yeah. most of them don't become criminal lawyers. <laughs> no, 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 it's, so, um, things change. Your yeah, perspective sure. changes. And you know what's very important? It's important to find the domain which balances your life. It's important to know what you want with your life. For example, there are people who are so career focused. They are saying, I don't care. I'm 80% of the time at work. I'm happy. But there are people who want a family, who want balance. I want time for myself. I want time for my partner. I want time for my kids, for my family. You can't do neurosurgery. It's hard. I mean, you can, mm -hmm. but it's, 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 it's very hard. You yeah. most of them can't really balance it, and then you turn out with a yeah. uh, with a burnout. So yeah, you have to really think. Yeah, you got to consider your priorities and your exactly. your main wishes. I would say for sure that makes sense. Exactly. I want to ask you something before we dive into the skincare side of the conversation that obviously everybody wants to know about. <laughs> uh, but yes. I want to ask you this whole balance because it's such an interesting subject that I think a lot of women run into um, mm -hmm. as a as sort of like a I don't want to say a problem but a challenge mm -hmm. so medicine is arguably one of the most competitive fields especially to get into it uh, it requires a lot of getting after it and constantly hustling and working hard and you know all of these all of these traits that historically speaking, are attributed to more of like a masculine energy, right? How are you balancing all of that right. out? 
how are you balancing all that out? Because I know from a little bit that I know about you that you are very similar to me, which you're very ambitious, you set goals, you obviously achieve them. I mean, you're a doctor, right? Like enough said. Uh, but I also have a very strong feeling that in your partner, you were seeking that multiplied by, you know, even more, right? Yes. How do you, <laughs> how do you balance that in yourself? How do you maintain this, you know, soft feminine figure while also still having this drive and ambition and not letting all of that kind of like, you know, stomp on your femininity? Well, my boyfriend is Turkish, which explains a lot. Because okay. Turkish men, <laughs> they are even like, if your ego is here and your ambitions are here and your strength is here as a European woman, the Turkish men, somehow they cover it up. <laughs> they are, I, this is one of the main reasons why my boy, like my boy, the, the origins of my boyfriend, I needed a man like this in my life. I'm a very strong woman right. and I like to be strong and I like to be strong at my work and everything. But still, when I come home, I want to be the woman. I want to be the girl. I want to be taken care of. It's, it's a nice feeling, you know? I don't want to be mm -hmm. boss at home. I don't want to give uh, um, the restrictions at home. I, I just loosen up. I just somehow loosen up. And I, there are moments where even my boyfriend, like very, very few ones, even he's saying to me, Christina, give it to me. I'm going to do it, you know? Basic example, uh, I'm, I'm, we are traveling. I want to carry my own luggage. He's like, Christina, it's fine. I can carry it. No, 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 I can carry it. Christina, I can carry it. Don't worry, you know. Sometimes you have to loosen up. Even though at work you're very, you have to be competitive. You have to be strong because men are not going to loosen up bef because you're a woman. They're not going to do that. They are going to put themselves exactly on the same level, especially in Germany where they want so much equality between uh you know one women and men so uh it's uh, i think it's something inside you to be able to loosen up because if you wouldn't do that you are not a woman anymore you have to still stay a woman even if you're strong you have to maintain femininity but i think it's a cultural thing as well because women in germany uh they are the men in the relationship not the men are the you know men are more the women in the relationship and women are more the men in the relationship. It's something very cultural, but not for me as an East European. This is never going to change. I'm never going to change, even living in Germany since uh, over 11 years. So, yeah, yeah. this is how um, I think it works for me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Canada is the same. It's it's I think all <laughs> of the Western world has the same the same type of thing, right? It's unbelievable. But it, it is it is an interesting thing, especially. You know, you mentioned what I'm gathering from you is it's yeah. up to you to loosen up and soften, but it's also your boyfriend who plays a huge part in it. Exactly. Because he's partner. the one who is who has who sometimes has to maybe remind yourself it's like, hey Christina, like it's let me take care of this, right? Exactly. So I think exactly. it's it's I always say it's it's up to us to start it and to initiate it, but it's up to men to catch on to it, right? Because they exactly. fall into our way of doing things in many ways, right? So if we take everything on ourselves continuously like it's a sweet deal for them sometimes, right? If, if, it's, exactly. if it's especially maybe a guy who is more or who has been more exposed culturally to these ideas of constant, you know, equality even at home, going 50-50 on everything at home, they'll just be like, okay, I won't do, I won't do it. You do it all, right? Whereas I, I think it's really, it, it's a fine balancing act, which I don't know why it's so hard for so many people in the West. Because again, like in our part of the world, <laughs> You know, that's just, it is, it is exactly like that. There's no discussions even about it, right? It's you, as a woman, you are free to do whatever you want, but like, you don't have to do it all, right? If you don't want to, because you're, you're a woman. Let's have a balancing act of these energies. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Christina, going on the first date in Germany, I'm not going to tell with who, but with men from Germany, uh, first dates, a lot of attraction still at the end, splitting the bill. So splitting the bill in Germany, it's something very normal. The question comes at the end from every single waiter together or separately. Or separate. Yeah. Even if they see couples, I would never ever ask. I would just put the bill in front of the men immediately. But yeah. uh, this is this is not something common. And then uh, the 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 result is okay. I had this pasta. I had this tea. What did you have? 
I couldn't believe it. It was the first date in Germany. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I knew this is not gonna, <laughs> this is not gonna work <laughs> from the very wow. beginning. And it when was I that moment, it, Christina realized that she needs a Turkish Christina, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because with my Turkish man, I have to say, he struggled four months to get a date with me. He constantly wrote me every single day for four months. At one point, he stopped. And that was the moment where I was thinking, what happened? Why doesn't he write me anymore? You know? Poop, like push, pull, uh, methodic from, for, from, from men. Yeah, so four months it took him. But he pushed, 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 pushed. And then after four months, finally, I gave him a chance. And now? Four after, months. I want you to think about what months. you just said here. And I would be curious to know after this episode to get responses from our audience, you know, whoever's listening to this. Yeah. When was the last time you heard a story in the West of a woman taking four months to be pursued <laughs> by a man? It's almost like men don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to generalize. There's lots of really great yeah. guys out there, but there's this culture of like instant, instant, you know, clinging. Instant like you, we, yeah, we meet yeah, yeah. and the, that's it. It, it, it happens yeah. and there's no more like pursuing, there's no more working for it. And the older I'm getting, the more I realize that men actually need that. They're not, yes. they're not meant to get a woman instantly. They're meant to kind of chase her and prove to her that he's worthy of her attention, worthy of the relationship. And that's totally okay because we're kind of built differently. No matter what they try to tell us, like that's kind of the way it's supposed to go. Not saying like I know some couples for whom it happened much faster and they've been together for years and it's all great. But I think there's something to be said about how important it is to just not let yourself instantly, you know, show show everything and just right away, you know, be all his and, you know. Exactly. Yeah, it's... But so after four that. months, we're diving into dating, even though, you know, we wanted to talk about dermatology. <laughs> but after four months, yeah. you he finally... What did he do? He reached out and you finally caved in? We went for a breakfast. Mm -hmm. He never invited me for dinner or drinks. He invited me for brunch, coffee, and breakfast. This is mm -hmm. an amazing man. <laughs> yep. Respectful. And, uh, you know, for me, it was uh, showing real interest and not showing just, you know, interest in other, other things. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. He was showing you he was serious. Exactly. He was serious. Yeah. Love it. How long have you guys been together? Oh, it's been how long? 2021? Yeah, since 2021. Almost two and a half years almost. It's been a nice. long. Yeah, yeah. I'm very happy. I wonder about how it. many women after this are going to be like, okay, so this guy has interest in me. I'm going to set a four month, four yeah, month four mark. <laughs> But the most important thing that I didn't, I didn't tell you because this is the highlight. He wrote me on Instagram on a Google Translate German because he was talking just Turkish and English and he didn't know what kind of a nationality I was. He wrote on Instagram. He didn't even see what kind of nationality I am. He wrote, um, hello, um, nice to meet you. I never actually write to women, but I think I found my future wife. This was his first sentence. <laughs> Oh yeah, amazing, right? It's so typical Turkish, kind of very. They're very direct. Yeah, they're very. I was just gonna say they know what they want and they go after it. Well, exactly. I think <laughs> from what I've learned, it's like Eastern European Slavic men, and then a whole other level that's like Turkish Middle Eastern men. <laughs> They like really go for it. I had a um, photo shoot with a lovely lady in Vancouver and she's from Ukraine. And she said she went to visit Ukraine. It was like, or no, sorry, she was living in Ukraine and her husband yeah. from Vancouver yeah. went to visit Ukraine because that's where he was from. He met her and within like, she was saying something like six or seven days, he was like, okay, so I don't do long distance. So we're going to have to start the process for you to move to Canada. So she was like, wow. I kind of had no choice. I moved to Canada. You know, he was like, okay, <laughs> that's it. This is my future wife. We're going to have a family. We're it's going done. for it. Yeah. yeah. But that's, no, it's, it's I, think, nice. I think most women want that. Even the ones who say that they don't, I think 
most women they kind of melt when something like that happens yes. right yeah it's kind of a it's kind of a movie scene i would say it's it's this uh, romantic hollywood everyone wants that even the ones who are yeah. saying no i don't need a man in my life you don't need you don't need a man to fulfill you you can fulfill mm -hmm. yourself but you need a partner in your life you need someone to love you you need to be, everyone needs to be loved not just from yeah. the family so yeah and i've said yeah. before you know if you know that you want to get married and if you know you want to be in a relationship stop saying that you don't need no man because that's exactly. that's not going to attract a nice guy you know like sure you can do it all on your own but if you want to get married and you have a family why 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 would you not let your guard down sometimes and not do everything on your own you know yeah no, i said i think it's a cultural thing and um yeah i don't think and I, I don't believe that Western European are going to ever be like the Eastern European. This is never going to change. This is going to be even more um, different from each other. It's always going to be more feminism in, in Western European countries and more old school mentality or let's say more of men of the relationship instead of the woman of the relationship in the Eastern European countries. But it's fine. It's fine. It is it's what fine. it is. Yeah, we can, we can, we can do it differently, Always. and we can also, yeah, we we can learn from one another, I guess. And I think the farther it swings down one side, the farther the other side goes too. It's like exactly almost exactly. all of the things that are happening is almost bringing out more traditional values out of Eastern European countries. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. Yeah. I agree on it. Let's dive into your specialty. Oh, let's now. Dive into the <laughs> not, not that dating isn't your specialty because you've had great advice, but the <laughs> the most, you know, I would say probably one of the most interesting subjects that you, you're never going to be out of work. Like you're never going to no. be out of work, right? Because this Thanks is something God. that people always want <laughs> yeah. to to perfect. They want to always look younger. They want to always look healthier and look beautiful. So you've chosen a field where I feel like no matter what goes on in the world, you're always going to have <laughs> an abundance of work. <laughs> this is good. This is good for me. I'm never going to be uh, jobless. So. Exactly. What are some things that yeah. you would say people don't know that they're doing that is really harmful uh, for their skin or something that maybe is more mainstream um, that you don't think is harmful, but it is and like kind of harmful to the level of detriment? Well, I think sunblocker is still a very big issue for people. There are still people believing that sunscreen is causing cancer. I still have patients telling me I'm not using a sunscreen because I think I would get cancer from it. I don't believe uh, sunscreen would help me protect my skin in winter because we don't have a sun in winter. Uh, why should I wear a sunscreen if uh, I'm not at the beach side? No, that's everything is false. There are studies made, several studies, even more than several made and shown and proven that sun can damage your skin, UVA, UVA UVB, UVC and so on can uh, damage the structure of your skin, can, can um, uh, turn good cells in bad cells, can uh, make you get a skin cancer. So it's very, very, very important to wear a sunblocker every single day of the year, regardless. So uh, yeah, this is uh, in my opinion and what I'm seeing in my patients, uh, I would say in proportion here in Germany, in proportion of 60%, they are not wearing sunscreen and they don't want to wear sunscreen and everyone believes it's greasy it's uh, making my skin skin feels oily which is just false because you just need to know what is your skin type and what kind of a sun blocker you need you know and this is something so simple you just need an advice from a specialist and that's it and you will know so this is uh, definitely something that people um, are still damaging their skin because they are not wearing. And something mainstream is cleansing, just cleansing of the skin. Um, people don't know how to clean their skin. I still believe people don't understand that using uh, micellar water, it's not enough. You have to double cleanse, you, especially when you wear makeup. You have to double Don't say you're not doing it. You're doing it. No, no. 
<laughs> I am doing it. I'm just laughing, laughing because the 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 missile the the missile missileer water is that what it's called in English? Missileer water. Yeah. I, I have. Uh, I literally just had a conversation with my mom about it because she was like, "Oh, I found this such great mis- mis- missileer water." Missileer water. And yeah. it's like <laughs> it's like step three, I think, or or sorry, step one. And then there's yeah. like so many other steps in my skincare. I'm I'm really like. I'm really paranoid about having good skin and all of that kind of Very stuff. Nice. So I have an extensive skincare routine. <laughs> uh, but it's just funny because you're like micellar water. I feel like it's not as common in Canada, but also people no. not, a, not a lot of people don't take care of their skin to the level well, of like yeah. Eastern European care mm-hmm. for skin. Um, so as soon as you said the only thing is micellar water, I just started laughing because I'm like, definitely so, there's a lot more to it. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> So either a micellar water and then just a, um, a water-based, a water-based uh, cleanser, or you take an oil-based cleanser and then a water-based cleanser. So you can you can choose whatever whatever fits you more. In the morning, I never um, suggest to do a double cleansing. It's too much for the skin. Even there are people when you wake up, you know, it's very individual because when you wake up and you look at in the mirror, you feel your skin either dry then i wouldn't i wouldn't do a cleansing why would you do it your skin is already dry you need hydration but if you wake up your skin is kind of oily you feel it greasy then it makes sense so it's very individual there is no standard the standard is definitely double cleansing in the in the evening and there are a lot of girls which don't understand that buying product putting a lot of ingredients on your face but not cleansing your face first it's 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 just a waste of of right. skincare and a waste of uh, money so it doesn't work these are such a basic things if you think about it so basic but so um somehow not really taking into consideration from from the people there are so many information I have a question I have a question for, for you about sunscreen because this is actually yes. a really interesting topic because it is becoming sort of like a very debatable thing that I can't debate on because I obviously don't know, like I don't have a medical you know, degree that's related to skincare. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was a chart that I saw once and I want to know your opinion. I'd probably be able to find it somewhere, but mm-hmm. it was basically a chart that tracked the level of um, melanoma, which is like mm-hmm. a... You'd, you'd be the better stadiums. at explaining what it is. Maybe the stadiums uh, the, of it. The, how, how it basically started to rise. In, mm-hmm. um, it was mm-hmm. specifically done on U.S. population. Mm-hmm. And the graph showed that it started to rise with the rise of use of sunscreen. I think it was like in the 70s or the 80s. Mm-hmm. So, you know... Like you hear, because this is almost like a nutrition subject, you know, when you don't yeah. have, um, you know, a, a medical background in it or an educational background in it per se, you obviously listen to experts in these areas. And it's almost frustrating how conflicting it is because you have very, uh, you know, accredited, very, um, cr- not, not credible, but very smart people talking about the specialists mm-hmm. in these areas, experts. Mm-hmm. And they will have completely contradicting opinions on the same subject. You know, mm-hmm. eat kale, don't eat kale. Kale is bad for you. You know, eat carbs, don't ever eat carbs. And it's like, oh my God, like, what do I eat? I just want to like make sure that I'm healthy. Just you know? drink water, so, that's it. <laughs> yeah, like I'm just going to drink water and that's it. Maybe a little bit of wine, and, you know. But with sunscreen, it's almost the same thing because you hear specialists in this area say, you know, maybe sunscreen is not that good for you because sun exposure is actually essential, which it is. I mean, vitamin D is essential, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. But then you hear, then you hear people say like, okay, no, it's, you know, you, you should protect your sun or you should protect your face from the sun at all times. You know, God forbid you get any exposure from direct sun without sunscreen on your face. And then you're like, damn it, like, what do I do? So your opinion is that sunscreen <laughs> is essential and people should absolutely yes. use it. Yes, yes. And depending on your skin type, there are um, calculations of how many minutes you can stay in the sun without the sunscreen. For example, for my how, for my uh, skin type, for your skin type, we are kind of the same. Um, you are allowed to stay kind of 20 minutes max without the sunscreen in the sun. After 20 minutes, it begins to damage your skin. For people who are, for example, type 3, type 4, 
which is a little bit more dark, they have a lot of melanin. So the, the ingredient which uh, makes color for your skin, they can stay longer because melanin is something that protects your skin. Why do we actually get tent? We get tent because it's a um, reaction of our skin to protect itself. That's why we get tent. We are building melanin. But the people who, like, for example, super white people, redhead people, like the reddish, uh, they don't even have this melanin. That's why they are not allowed at all to be in the sun because it's very dangerous for them. So I don't know about this right. graphic that you, was, that you were uh, talking about. I will uh, get back to you on it uh, after I will yeah, check I'd it be by curious. myself. I'd but, be curious um, because obviously when you hear about something like that, you're like, oh, snap, maybe, maybe the, because thinking, at the okay. end of the day, sunscreen is, and you know, your, my brain is like, okay, well, sunscreen is made out of a chemical, out of chemicals. So yes. yeah, maybe there was the introduction of these chemicals and skin absorbs things. And, you know, maybe it is so detrimental yeah. when you see something like that. So I'd be curious, you know, maybe I'm, I want to have you back on, obviously, because the subject is, you know, we can talk infinitely about skincare yeah, and how to stay exactly. young and stuff like I mean, that. We so, can write a book about it. <laughs> yes, one of these days when I'm in Europe, uh, which should be fairly soon, maybe we can organize something. Either I'll come to you or maybe when you're in North America, like we'll plan something and, and have a discussion. It'll be for our next um, episode would be, about the whole would be melanoma nice. and stuff like that. Yeah. But what what I can tell you is uh, chemicals are important, actually. Without chemicals, we like everything is chemical. Yeah, so we need the chemicals. They, I I never recommend, um, um, for example, creams or serums made out of plant based or this vegan stuff. I don't really recommend them to my patients because mostly this is these are the ones that you can um, react allergically to. So you would react more allergically to something like plant based or very natural, other than on on the chemical ones. And there are some particular chemi chemicals in the uh, so ingredient in the in the sunscreen, which protects you from the all the all the radiation. So these are actually very important. If you don't have them in your sunscreen, then you don't have any protection. So this is interesting. You yeah. don't. Re this is one of the questions from my followers when I posted a Q and A. If people yeah. want to ask you questions, uh, the best herbal um, serum for your face. So you don't recommend herbal. I recommend oils, for example, marula oil, which hydrates your skin, gives smoothness. There are some oils which I recommend, but generally I don't recommend um, skincare which is too much plant-based, too much uh, like natural, on the natural side. I don't recommend them because most of the people come to me back and react allergically on it. That's why I, I take a little bit distance from it, out of experience. Right, so from your... From your experience, it's it's a yes. little bit more. What about sensitivity levels in skin? Is there so I, for example, figured out that I don't have very sensitive skin. I'm very lucky because I, <laughs> I have friends who will, you know, anything new that they introduce to their skincare regimen is like right? a huge ordeal. Yeah, they're like, no, 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 I need to stick to it. For me, I've noticed that anything I try, pretty much, like more or less, I'm good. Like it doesn't really bother me too much. That's good. Um, That's good. Is there anything you can recommend? that is like a non-negotiable that you should have in your skincare regimen if you do have sensitive skin? Of course, ceramides all the time. Ceramides, squalene, uh, glycerol, everything which repairs your skin barrier. So, for example, I, lot, I have a lot of patients, I have friends which don't even do a skincare routine, don't take care of their skin because they are afraid, exactly the way you say. It. They are so afraid to put something over their skin because they are very sensitive. So with sensitive skin, I don't recommend using, for example, a lot of exfoliants. But that doesn't mean you never should use it. Just you have to use it way lesser, way less than other people who have a little bit more stronger texture of the skin. But still, an exfoliant, a retinol, a vitamin C, uh, azelaic acid, they are still important in your routine, even with sensitive skin. You always have to um, try to have a moisturizer or try to have a serum which immediately repairs your skin after putting something which, are, which is going to exfoliate, which is going to try to smoothen up or, or firm the structure of the skin. That's, I think that's the key point, to always have a key ingredient which helps you regenerate immediately your skin and not to mix acids not to mix retinol with acids it's always a 
a big question to most of the women that are following me. They are always asking me, okay, am I allowed to mix this with this? I have a rosacea. I have a very sensitive skin. It's very individual, but sensitive skin definitely um, should be very careful with uh, exfoliants, with retinol, vitamin C, but not restrict on them, still use them, but in a reduced, reduced way. I would say. How, yeah. cru how crucial is retinol? I know you messaged me because I just started using it like last week. Yeah, and, I saw uh, it. <laughs> you, you basically were like, what the hell? You just now started using it? How crucial is retinol and do you recommend it for everybody? Uh, retinol, I think vitamin A, vitamin A derivates or retinol, for example, or retinoids, uh, which are more stronger, of course. I would uh, recommend them beginning with 30. Until you're 30 you don't really need them. You can start very slow with 25, 26, but you don't really need them. Um, actually, they say, so studies say, that collagen production starts going down beginning with 25. So they slowly, the production is reducing itself. When you're 30, you have already reached a, a peak, which is even more, like the reduction doubles itself so that's why i think with 30 it's actually a good start using retinol or retinoids depending on on your skin situation yeah i would what are your uh, never ever um uh how can i say i would never ever stop using it even in summer i would still use it it's something really very important in the skincare routine of a woman it's even yeah. I always I, tell my patients, it's even, I'm so sorry, it's even important sometimes you don't have to always go immediately to Botox, immediately to fillers. Skincare can make such a huge difference in your skin and it's so underrated sometimes, in my opinion. I think it's become almost like a trend, retinol, right? Like you see it everywhere online. Yes. But it's portrayed as like the scary thing because it's so strong. <laughs> and then I finally, like I tried it literally last week and I was like oh this is not so scary at all so I don't know I, I think I told you in Canada you need a prescription for it as far now you got me thinking but but you I you need a prescription for everything in Canada it's really it's, Unbelievable. it's way too crazy it's too yeah strict. but it's it's really too strict and they're getting strict. involved in supplement industries and I, it's a whole other wow. conversation <laughs> and very uh but you yeah like you in Mexico, you can get everything under the sun. It's like a whole opposite <laughs> spectrum. You can get things that are just like, you probably shouldn't be able to get, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I tried it and it, it felt really good on my skin so far. So let's actually talk a little bit about, you mentioned it in passing there. What are your thoughts on Botox and fillers and the more invasive ways to care for your skin and youth? They're amazing. They're amazing. But... Um, even though several years ago I was very pro fillers, for example, I was, um, I even got fillers myself, parts of my face, but very, very less a few years ago. Now, mm -hmm. because of the technology, because of, um, they, they, you, you want to get an anti-aging treatment, which is so less invasive as possible fillers, even though they are less invasive, still they are more invasive than a laser, for example. So fillers, nice, but just if you have a volume loss or if, you, if, you, if your skin is dehydrated, you want to have a booster of uh, vitamins, of a little bit of uh, hyaluronic acid. I'm very, um, I'm very, fr I'm a good friend, let's say it like that, with Skultra, Profilo. These are everything that builds collagen or um, hydrates the skin from inside, but they are not changing your face. Because most of the filler, people are afraid to put filler inside their faces because they are thinking, oh, but I'm going to look different. I'm going to look maybe like, a, like an egg or like an apple. Or mm -hmm. there are a lot of doctors which are putting a lot. You know, you have to always uh, make a very individual um, plan of the face and inject in individual. But most of the doctors, unfortunately, have a, they have a standard. That's why a lot of women, they are looking the same. You know what I mean? Right. That's why a little bit with, with fillers, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like 50-50. Botox, best thing ever. 
Well, I love Botox. Botox is amazing. And I recommend it preventive already, but kind of like a baby Botox. So baby Botox, this term baby Botox means just that the doses is half of it. So you just get a little bit less than normal. But Botox is something that prevents wrinkles. So you can prevent wrinkles. You can um, you can small make make your face smaller when you inject, for example, here. If you have a little bit like a brighter face for a woman, which wouldn't look so feminine, um, it helps against migraines. It it helps against pores. There are so many things uh, positive. That's about one of Botox. the reasons why you and I get along. No, just kidding. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> I. I it's no secret. I mean, I've been really open about all the stuff that I've done, but Me I too. love Botox. It's it's yes. a, I always you know that you know that saying like um diamonds are a girl's best friend and I was like yeah. Yeah, diamonds were a girl's, girl's best friend <laughs> until Botox came along and now it's <laughs> definitely Botox. <laughs> it's yeah, so but, good. Um it can be made so natural. Look, for example, I have it. Yeah. Can you I I can look angry. I can look surprised yeah i can look happy it can be done very natural so it's about yeah. the amount that you put inside it's yeah. about to to know every individual it's about you you have to to check the, the mimic of the person as a doctor and always less is more not mm -hmm. more is less less is more so uh, better less doses and then you can still inject a little bit more after two weeks but a natural, a natural uh, uh, result is always better than than a frizzed face. I would say. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting because I go. Um, I mean, it's no secret that when it comes to injectable side of things, mm -hmm. Romania, Moldova, Ukraine, Russia are like way better Huge. than you know Canada at least. Like for sure, <laughs> yeah. you know. And when I go back home, I usually go to. I have a. Um, I guess they call them cosmetologists there, um, the lady who injects stuff in my face. And she's amazing. I mean, she's so great. And yeah. she always tells me it's not about the amount. It's about how you inject it. You have to exactly. really know what you are doing. Yeah. Because she, I can't remember what the units was. She always notes them. But she basically said, I'm putting actually not a, not a huge amount of units into your forehead like I get it here. Uh, but it's how I inject it. I know how to inject it so that I can freeze you, totally, completely freeze you, and you won't be able to move your eyebrows much because of how I'm injecting it. Exactly. Which got me thinking, because in Canada, I, I went to, there was one specialist who was just amazing, uh, but I did go to a place once, and they were like, well, you need a lot of units. Like, if you want, you know, if, if you want this and that, you need, and I was like, mm, mm. I don't, are you sure about that, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll wait until I go back home to Moldova and then I'll, I'll get it there. But it yeah. is, I don't know, I, it, as long as you, exactly right, like as long as the doctor, like she has turned me away a couple of times when I, because, you know, I go back to Canada and I'm like, let's just get everything done so that it lasts a long time. And there's been a couple of times where she was like, no, I'm not touching you anymore. Like you've had enough, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So you want, you want somebody who's like that. You want somebody who's going to do what's right for you and your face, not somebody who's just going to give you treatments for the sake of giving treatments, you know? Or for the sake of just taking money. Yeah, yeah Think exactly. about that too. I think uh, the Eastern European have a better sense of aesthetic. I think that's the point. Because uh, yes. this, is, this is the main point. Because if you think about, I mean, I will give us as an example because we are here and we are both, uh, you're Moldavian and Romanian, East European. So... <laughs> Uh, I would say we have naturally a sense of aesthetic in comparison to, I would say now for me, Germans or Canada, uh, people from Canada. It's um, sometimes maybe um, they don't understand that doing too much, it's turning the person in something unnatural and unnatural doesn't mean beautiful anymore beautiful means keeping your your um how, how would you say it in english keeping your um your the features, base of your, your it's almost exactly, like in, yeah your features you're yes, enhancing yes. them rather than <clears throat> changing you enhance, them, right? exactly you enhance the beauty you don't you don't want to change it so uh these are key points to making someone looking 
better, but enhancing their beauty and not changing them through yeah. Botox, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So big fan. <laughs> Yes, I, I mean, I, I love Botox. I have some friends who are like super against it and they're all natural and I respect that. Like, I'm, th that's totally cool, you know? And it's funny because we always make fun of each other because they're like, it's poison, you know? And I'm like, whatever, you know? <laughs> I, I, I'm looking good. It's, you, you can think of it as poison. I'll, I'll, I'll keep doing it and, and not have wrinkles. You know, like we just mock one another because I respect that too, like if you don't want to do it, but it works great for me. It works great for everybody I know. So, it's about yeah. how you feel, Christina. You have to feel good about yourself. You're not doing yeah. it for her or for people, for exactly. your husband. You're doing it for yourself because this is something, again, it's European. We women, we are not being beautiful for our men. We feel powerful. We feel confident when we look good. Yeah. 100%. Even though men find us beautiful without makeup without our, I don't know, special blazers, clothes, whatever, Botox. Um, my boyfriend sometimes doesn't even see the difference when I'm doing something. Yeah, so. for sure. But I feel great yeah. about it. I feel confident. I feel refreshed. Yes. You know? so, I've always said that, and this is something, I don't know how that became a controversial thing to say in the West, but when you like your reflection in the mirror, you will feel more confident. If you want exactly. to feel more confident, take care of yourself, whatever that means to you. For, you know, some of my friends, again, they're all natural. God forbid they put any injectables or like, you know, they, they don't like that stuff. They feel confident. It works for them. For me, I like a little bit of Botox. Not going to say no to a little bit of a filler just to kind of enhance some things. I like the, my reflection in the mirror. Makes me confident. Perfect. Works for me, you know. Exactly. You just have to find what that means to you looking at yourself in the mirror and and liking yourself loving yourself because that's where it all starts to me confidence is not just being beautiful you know confidence is, is the mixture of being smart and beautiful you can't be just smart and be ugly or let's say not ugly but you don't really take care of yourself or you are extremely beautiful but you don't have anything it doesn't work it, confidence is a, is a mixture of it that's why you know, um, being uh, beautiful, taking care of yourself and uh, studying something, doing something in your life, um, excelling at something, that makes you powerful. Not having a man by your side, not, uh, I don't know, uh, b taking uh, 10,000 likes on Instagram. It's, 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 it's what you achieve with yourself. I think that makes you powerful and makes you confident as a, as a, as a woman. Yes, so, I think that's great advice. Spoken like yeah. a true Eastern European. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Christina. it's uh, what, I, what I feel, what I learned, what I think it's important. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Christina, this was such a pleasure. I can't believe it's already been so much. pretty much one hour since we started. <laughs> um, I really appreciate your time. I'm going to include all the links to your socials is there anything mm -hmm. in particular or is there a place anywhere in particular that you wish uh, for our audience to be directed to find you well i think my main is right now my instagram which is dr chrissy with c without h <laughs> with two s and 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 the e at the at the end so dr chrissy will find me i'm gonna be explaining a lot of uh, skincare um tips and tricks what to do, what not to do, how to enhance your beauty using skincare or doing a particular procedure. So I'm going to be very, very active, both in German, English, and third Romanian. So I'm speaking three languages. Um, yeah. Again, like a true Romanian, because I, I think I said, so I, I, I yeah. mentioned to you earlier, but you, Romanian, so Russian is my first language. Romanian used to be fluent. It used to be my, my second language because the first two grades I went to yeah. uh, Romanian school. So it was fluent. And then I moved to Canada and English became my second language. Romanian became my third. And because I speak Russian with my family, it's insane how much I forgot. But oh, no. the good news is that when I go back to Moldova and I practice it, it comes back. So what it I need to do back. is That's I think good. I need to, I just think I need to either listen to some audio books or radio or stuff like that to just kind of let it all marinate in there and come back. Because I think it's going to be much easier to get it to come back than learn it from scratch. But Romanians, specifically Romanians from Romania, are insane at learning languages. 
it's so crazy to me. Every Romanian I know speaks a, like just. A, a, I speak three languages, like no big deal. You know what I mean? I <laughs> just like it's, three it's, languages it's normal. Fluently. It's normal. I knew a Romanian who spoke seven languages, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, oh my God, I think because is Romanian is Latin based, right? It's the closest thing to Latin. Could be. And and I think I think it's probably easier to learn, like you know, French, all of the other Latin based languages, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, it's amazing. It's like no big deal. I just speak fluently three languages, and my Instagram and now, is in three languages too. <laughs> yeah, I I, I yeah. really do that, and now I'm learning Turkish as well. Can you imagine that? Oh wow! So it would wow. be the fourth. I'm not at the level of speaking, but I understand, and I can uh, speak yeah. a little bit to my patients. And there are a lot of Turkish people in Berlin, so it's like it's kind of amazing. They are very, very happy when some when there is a doctor speaking Turkish with them. So I'm I'm uh, I'm trying. I'm, but I could say amazing. I could say definitely that German, English, Romanian are at a very high level. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Good it for was, you. It was amazing to speak with you, Christina. Such Likewise. A, Thank you so much for your time. Such a beautiful vibe and uh, we will chat soon. That's for sure. I think we, we have a lot of soon. other things to, to discuss. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for tuning into my podcast. I will see you not next week, but in a few weeks, renewed and refreshed. So stay tuned. Thank you.